Hello everyone, my name is Donis Bendisho, a licensed psychometrician from Lahok Training Center, and welcome to this series of Theories of Personality featuring trait theories. This time, we will talk about Raymond B. Cattell's 16 personality factors. For your inquiries and suggestions, you may reach us through our email and Facebook account that is fb.com slash lahoktc for our Facebook account and hr.lahok at gmail.com for our uh, Gmail address. Now, you can comment your suggested topics for, uh, for our next session. Now, let's talk about Cattell's profile. Raymond Cattell was born in Staffordshire in England, March 20, 1905, and uh, died in February 2, in 1998, in Honolulu, Hawaii, U.S. Now, he is known as a British-born American psychologist considered to be one of the leading personality theorists. He earned his BS in chemistry at the University of London in 1924 and earned his PhD in psychology from the University of London in 1929. He also became a professor at Clark University in 1938 and moved to Harvard University in 1941 to 1943 where... Uh, he was invited by Gordon Alport. Okay, Gordon Alport is very important um, person in his uh, study. Later on, we will discuss that. In 1945, uh, Cattell took a uh, position at, at the University of Illinois and Urbana, where he established a research department and conducted a factor analysis on Albert and Alport's lexical study on 4,500 words. Now, in 1949, Cattell published his uh, first edition of 16 personality factor uh, inventor or questionnaire. Uh, he also considered as a prolific writer in the field of uh, psychological measurement. Uh, so he also believed that personality can be studied and organized through scientific study, and of course, human characteristics and behaviors could be predicted based on the underlying personality traits. Also, he worked with psychologist Charles Spearman, who was recognized for his, first, uh, for his uh, factor analysis techniques. This technique has been used by Cattell to create his own personality taxonomy. Okay, so basically he discovered 16 personality factors and uh, five global factors, uh, which is identified as a um, original big five using this uh, factor analysis of Spearman. Also, he further uh, studied Spearman's G factor or what we call this the general mental ability or general intelligence, which was considered to be uh, too broad. So Cattell theorized the existence of the fluid intelligence or the GF and crystallized intelligence or the GC to explain human cognitive ability that is according to Cattell in 1963. He also investigated changes in the said intelligence, the GF and the GC over the lifespan. So he studied it in uh, 1967 with Horn and uh, in 1971. So fluid intelligence refers to this person's ability to answer unusual reasoning problems and like the correlated with number of essential uh, skills such as learning, comprehension, and problem solving. And on the other hand, the crystallized intelligence involves the outcome or the individual's ability of a deductive reasoning or deduce secondary relational abstractions by applying the previous learned relational abstractions. How is that? So the abstract uh, thinking will be translated to a more concrete or material or object. Okay, so for example, 
a person may start to realize the importance of money. It can be used in exchange for other goods. So that person uh, starts to uh, draw away from or try to abstract the meaning of money. Learning or knowing that the money is somewhat valuable, uh, it is the primary uh, abstraction. Using it to gain other goods or investing it to different channels, growing it by uh, building business or capitalize on others' effort or uh, work to generate more money is the outcome or the secondary abstraction of money. So the person learned how to use this abstract uh, thought about the money. So Katela was able to construct uh, culture peer intelligence test or the CIFIT. This is a nonverbal test to measure one's ability to solve problems without being hindered by the language being used. So when uh, being assessed uh, in terms of one's cognitive abilities. Now let's explore on how Cattell decreased Albert and Allport psycholexical study in 1936. Now, uh, psychologists have argued how personality should be defined and explained. Uh, one of these key theories is known as the trait theory of personality. We have discussed Isaac, we have discussed Allport, and now we are discussing Cattell. So according to trait theory, an individual's personality is formed or of a number of widespread characteristics, traits, or uh, factors. One of them attempted to describe every single feature might probably exist. For example, we have Gordon Alport and Albert in 1936. They recognize more than uh, 4,000 uh, terms in English language, which could be utilized and explain uh, one's personality. Now, um, Raymond Cattell uh, formed this 16 personality by explaining Alport's list and decreased it down to 171 characteristics. Often, by reducing terms that were redundant, he then applied a statistical technique. So we have uh, recognized that factor analysis of Spearman was being used to recognize traits that are linked or uh, correlated to one another. With this system, he was able to decrease his list to 16 personality factors. In addition to research in personality, Cattell's work with multivariate uh, gave constant uh, value or importance in the field of psychometrics that we are learning now. While more uh, pioneering researches and uh, in psychology, has concentrated on analyzing uh, particular variables in confinement, but Cattell explored the use of multivariate analysis or the um, factor analysis to support researchers who are observing individuals' uh, personality in, in its complexity and uh, research aspects of human behavior. So he derived into 16 personality factors. Okay, so Cattell also suggested that researchers can gather uh, data from um, different perspectives or aspects of a person. So we have L data, Q data, and T data. Uh, data. Okay, so for the L data, uh, the person's life record, it is likely composed of a person's life or others' uh, ratings, which may include life history, the absences at work, or school grades, and the like. While the Q data refers to the questionnaire data, the response of a person coming from the questionnaire or the self-report inventories. These are likely designated to rate an individual's personality. On the other hand, we have the T data, which is gathered from the interpretation of the objective test, okay? So, so we inquire with the personality construct or the information concerning an individual 
uh, we gathered from the objective testing or formal scientific measurement. Okay, so it has been suggested that Cattell examine the T data and the Q data using factor analysis to look at which kinds of behavior may likely direct to be grouped together or correlated with one another among individuals. Later on, he identified 16 personality traits. Okay, so Cattell suggested that we have two kinds of traits, the surface traits and the source traits. The surface, it is characterized by those uh, behaviors or those tendencies which are obvious or noticeable by others. On the other hand, the source traits could be an underlying or covert traits which cannot be observed directly. So Cattell uh, considered source traits or the noticeable ones or the underlying uh, covert traits to be more relevant and defining uh, the personality of an individual compared to the surface or the noticeable ones. Cattell offered a personality test likely to identify um, ISENC's API, which tends to measure each of the various traits. This is the Cattell 16 personality factors test. Now, it has been composed with 160 questions in total. So this test uh, has 10 questions linking to each personality factor. We will discuss each factors uh, in a bit. So the following are personality factors which describe the characteristics uh, applied for each of the 16 personality dimensions. Okay, so here are the list of the scales or the factors of the 16 PF. So we have warmth, reasoning, emotional stability, dominance, liveliness, role consciousness, social boldness, sensitivity, vigilance, abstractedness, privateness, apprehension, openness to change, self-reliance, perfectionism, and tension. We will discuss this one by one, but, but it's, as you can see here in the slide uh, given, we have the descriptors of low range of each uh, primary scales. And we also have the high range for these uh, scales. So one uh, scale refers to an individual's characteristic of being outgoing or warm. So this is the high range. On the other hand, we have a person's characteristic of being reserved. So a person with warmth uh, characteristic is being nice to people, okay? So high scorers are likely uh, outgoing, being attentive to others, kind, uh, easygoing, participating, and like people. So in the other hand, uh, we have sc uh, low scorers who are likely to be uh, distant, reserved, uh, detached, somewhat formal, and aloof. We have the reasoning or the B factor. So B factor describes a person's ability to an abstract way of thinking or a low mental capacity that is um, the low range. So versus having the concrete one or high mental ability. Now it is very important for us to know that uh, reasoning or the factor B is um, defined as the only cognitive ability compared to other 15 other personality dimensions. So for an instance, a person with high level of abstract thinking tends to be creative, artistic, imaginative, and inventive. That is in the low range. On the other hand, we have a concrete way of thinking or they are likely to be precise. Um, they like to uh, reason out into a realistic perspective or manner. They are uh, very sensible to logic and generally uh, detailed in terms of information. Next one, we have emotional stability. So this emotional stability factor likely describe a person's calm disposition 
versus um, characteristics of being nervous or emotionally unstable. So this factor tends to uh, describe a person uh, coping mechanism in terms of his or her own emotional response towards a certain situation. For example, high uh, scorer individual may tend to be adaptive, calm, and mature and have mature disposition of emotion when facing a um, problematic situation. On the other hand, um, a person who is likely to have low score in this dimension appears to feel upset easily um, reactive to these uh, situations and generally having some difficulty in controlling his or her emotional response. Okay, we also have a dominance factor. Dominance factor is suggested to be um, characterized with being dominant and forceful versus being submissive. So a uh, high score of this uh, perspective is likely to be stubborn or being assertive, uh, being opinionated, and somewhat aggressive or bossy. So they are being forceful and demanding when dealing with others. On the other hand, the low scorers tend to be submissive and they do not want to have conflict with others, which is why they tend to be obedient, cooperative, humble and likely to be accommodating. We also have the liveliness factor. The liveliness factor uh, tends to describe this characteristic of being spontaneous or uh, being impulsive versus uh, the characteristic of being um, restrained or being uh, introspective. How is that? In this factor, we can say that a person with a high uh, score in liveliness tends to display high energy level in social gatherings. He or she likes be, uh, to be spontaneous uh, in speaking and interactive with others. He or she can be observed to be happy-go-lucky type of a person. Most likely, they, are, uh, they tend to be cheerful and generally expressive and impulsive in terms of their um, emotions. On the other hand, a person with low score in this dimension likely to be seen as quiet, reserved, and um, serious type of a person. So they likely to be introspective in terms of the life experiences that they have. The factor uh, dutifulness or the rule consciousness uh, best described as uh, characterized with uh, conforming uh, versus non-conforming. So a person with high level of uh, rule consciousness tends to be... Uh, display being organized or conscientious and they like to follow authority uh, they also desire to confirm uh, to conform with uh, duties and responsibilities so more likely uh, they are moralistic and conscious to the rules on the contrast uh, low scorers uh, disregard rules and they are non-conforming to rules and regulation social boldness um, factor is characterized with uh, being disinhibited versus being shy. How is that? A social bold uh, individual tends to be um, confident or a person with high score tends to be uh, venturesome, being uninhibited, and uh, thick-skinned. Whereas a person with low score in this uh, factor tends to be shy, timid, threat sensitive and intimidated uh, by others or the problems he or she is uh, facing in terms of the social um, context. The sensitivity uh, factor tends to describe a person's tough-mindedness. So this sensitivity um, factor is being described by the tendency of uh, how an individual is being affected by situations. For example, a person might be uh, high in this uh, sensitivity factor. So it may be uh, described that the person is being um, sensitive or being intuitive and uh, somewhat refined. On the other hand, a person who scores in terms of this could be more objective, more uh, self-reliant, more tough, and uh, utilitarian in uh, general.
the vigilant uh, characteristic of a person may also describe by being suspicious versus uh, being relaxed. So a person with high score in this factor likely to be distrustful and uh, vigilant and tends to be suspicious, skeptical, and generally described as oppositional. Okay, so a person with low score in this um, factor tends to be trusting, accepting, and easy, and most of the time unsuspecting to other uh, motives. We have abstractedness. The abstractedness factor is best described by a person uh, being imaginative or unconventional versus uh, conventional. So abstractedness uh, factor uh, describes an individual's tendency to be imaginative. So it suggests that a person uh, who scores low, uh, he or she tends to be a practical or um, solution-oriented and conventional. In contrast, a person with high abstractedness or um, tends to be imaginative and somewhat impractical. So they are being absorbed uh, in ideas and generally like abstract uh, thinking. So we have privateness. The privateness part um, of the factor refers to being discreet or being sophisticated. On the other hand, uh, a person who is a low scorer of this one is being naive or unpretentious. So they are being straightforward, they are being honest, so they are sincere and open to others. We have apprehension. Apprehension is characterized by being worried and compared to that is being confident. So a person who scores low in apprehension is likely um, confident with oneself and they feel secure and self-satisfied. The openness uh, to change factor uh, tells us that a, uh, a person who is um, who has high range in this uh, type of uh, factor is likely uh, familiar uh, would likely like to have um, experimental uh, experiences or liberal, uh, flexible to the experiences that they have. In contrast, those individuals with um, low tendency of having openness to change likely to have uh, be attached with rituals and being conservative to the ways and means of uh, the traditions that he or she has. We also have the self-reliance. The self-reliance is uh, characterized by this uh, self-sufficiency or resourcefulness. On the other hand, those individuals with a uh, low self-reliance tends to be dependent and conventional. The perfectionism uh, factor tends to show us the tendency of individual to be controlling, and uh, being disciplined. On the other hand, it is being control, uh, uncontrolled and undisciplined. And the last one, we have the tension. The tension uh, factor tells us that a person could be um, impatient versus relaxed. So a ten, uh, person with high tension factor is uh, likely driven by being uh, impatient. And low scorers tend to be relaxed, uh, patient, and composed, low, low drive. Okay? So the following are the global uh, scales or the second order factors, including the primary factors. So um, Cattell and Mead in uh, 2008 uh, suggested that uh, factor analysis led to this uh, global scales or the uh, original big five. They said that some researchers discovered that many primary factors consistently blended into uh, these factors. But more recently, uh, research, uh, researchers such as uh, Costa and McRae studied and rediscovered and popularized the big five model or what we call the OCEAN acronym, the openness, conscientiousness, extraversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. Okay. So for uh, these global skills, 
for example, we have uh, extroversion, it is characterized by the primary skills. So for example, we have extroversion, it is likely characterized of being warm reserved or the factor A, and also by lively or serious by factor F, the H or the bold versus shy, or the privateness uh, versus forthright or the N factor, and the Q2 factor, which is self-reliant or group-oriented. Okay? So the same goes with other global skills, the anxiety, tough-mindedness, and independence, and self-control are most likely built up with this uh, specific factors or the primary order factors. Now we have the comparison of the 16 PF, uh, five global factors versus the big five models of uh, Costa and Macri and Lewis Goldberg. So as you can see here, uh, we have the 16 PFs, uh, extraversion, introversion. The same goes with Neopi, uh, extraversion. On the other hand, Goldberg tends to describe it as a uh, surgency. The same goes with uh, neuroticism of neopi. It is uh, considerably described as low anxiety versus high anxiety of Cattell and emotional instability of uh, Goldberg. And uh, tough-mindedness or receptivity of Cattell is being described by uh, Costa and Macri as openness. And on the other hand, intellect or culture by Goldberg. We also have Cattell's uh, independence versus accommodation. It is being described by uh, Neopi as agreeableness. The same goes with Goldberg. On the other hand, uh, the last one, we have the consciousness of Neopi by Costa and Macri. And it is described by uh, self-control uh, control or lack of uh, uh, restraint by uh, Cattell. On the other hand, Goldberg suggested that it is also consciousness or dependability in his scale of uh, big five. Now, Cattell and Mead in 2008 uh, suggested that the biggest difference between the 16 PF of Cattell uh, tends to be more of the technical part. How is that? So they explained that the 16 PF questionnaire, the primary trait definitions are based on the decades of scientific research and in contrast, Neopi or Costa and Macri's uh, definition of it, the primary level of personality facets were decided by agreement of among a small group of psychologists. Thus, uh, according to them, it is were forced to be statistically uncorrelated or using the orthogonal for reasons of theoretical and statistical simplicity. That is their word. So they added that in terms of technical procedure, Cattell use oblique rotation. Okay. So in terms of using statistical uh, data analysis, uh, Cattell use this uh, oblique rotation. On the other hand, Goldberg and Costa and Macri use the orthogonal rotation. So the main difference is that oblique rotation is more of a correlating the factors with each other. On the other hand, Goldberg, Costa, and Macri uses this uh, orthogonal rotation, which restricts the factors from correlating with one another in terms of the factor analysis or the statistical analysis that they are using. Okay. So Bolt and colleagues in 2016 suggested that orthogonal rotation generates factors which are uncorrelated. On the other hand, oblique rotation generates factors that can be correlated with one another. Okay. So for the last one, we have the validity scales of this um, 16 PF. We have the IM scale or the impression management scale, which is more likely bipolar scale with high score reflecting socially desirable and low score reflecting socially undesirable responses. So according to the researchers, high impression management 
tends to suggest that the person who is taking the test might have the accuracy of self-description or it suggests that it is deliberate self-presentation only or they act as a, have this extreme socially desirable behavior. On the other hand, low impression management tend to suggest that it is a willingness to admit undesirable qualities. Okay, we also have the infrequency where the scale tends to have the most statistically infrequent responses on the test. So which are all the middle B or responses and appear in the test booklet with a question mark tends to uh, be the response of this individual. So a score, a score above the 95th percentile, according to the researchers, may show that an examinee may uh, find this uh, test to be hard or they tend to respond randomly or they tend to uh, see this test as difficult uh, test. So they encountered some uh, uh, indecisiveness of uh, choosing A or C or just uh, putting the uh, wrong patterns and just uh, ignoring the precise answer for the test. We also have the acquiescence uh, scale or refers to the index at level two which examine as accepted the items careless of what was being asked. So for example, high acquiescence uh, scale tends to suggest that an examinee uh, might be uh, misunderstood the item content may also suggest that the test taker responded randomly or has an unclear self-image, okay? So the 16 PF personality questionnaire uh, developed and, uh, to assess personality factors and frequently used now. It is used in terms of career counseling, business, uh, testing and selection, and it is comprised with a forced choice. So you have to choose uh, three different choices. So we have uh, the personality traits are later represented by range and individual's score drops somewhere on the continuum between highest and lowest extreme. Okay, so the scores can be described using number of uh, different methods and depending on how or why that test is being used. Some interpretive uh, summaries or reports can be uh, in terms of the clinical procedures or industrial or um, the school setting and somewhat uh, being used in terms of assessing leadership, uh, teamwork, and the like. Now, Cattell and Mead in 2008 suggested that 16PF questionnaire can be a uh, can give us in-depth and integrated knowledge of an individual's whole personality, all right? So there are some open source uh, data or open source uh, for the 16PF questionnaire and you can see it in terms of the website open source psychometrics project. That is the questionnaire for educational ends and only uh, used for this uh, term alone and cannot be replaced. Uh, other expert advice and medical examination. Okay, we heard the references that we use for this um, today's lecture. And thank you so much. Uh, this concludes our discussion. And special mention to those individuals who showed their uh, interest to join our Facebook group. I hope uh, you will also share your insights. So everyone watching this video and browsing the comment section would also learn. I feel really glad that uh, some of you wants to, uh, want to share and also learn in this process. And I just uh, saw my previous professor who, who just joined and she is now teaching in a school um, uh, somewhere in uh, Manila. And special mention to you, Mom Eds. Thank you so much, guys. And expect more uh, content like this one. And we will see you in the next video. Thank you so much.